The National Parks Arts Foundation is an amazing organization that creates these uh, unique artist in residence opportunities. I mean, really, a national park unit that an uh, artist, a musician, a poet, a, you know, a writer, a filmmaker, a photographer, a painter can stay in a park for a month and create and uh, get to interact with uh, park residents as well, or not just residents, but visitors as well. They get to have an, a, a unique event as well. These residencies are cool. I mean, you could stay at Dry Tortugas on a desert island. You could be in the volcanoes uh, in Hawaii. Oh, that's good. Uh, you could be at a fort. And that's what we're going to be talking about on today's Big Glen mm -hmm. Radio First Friday Arts and Park Show. We're excited to chat with rancher and painter Alice Elise. Uh, she is the National Parks Arts Foundation's November 2018 Artist in Residence at Fort Union National Monument in New Mexico. We have her and also Lorenzo Vigil joining us. He is the Chief of Interpretation and Operations at Fort Union National Monument, and he's going to share some of the fort's history. I mean, this is an iconic fort. Uh, this changed a lot of what was going on in the Southwest. Uh, he's also going to talk about the visitor experience, but I want to give uh, the National Parks Arts Foundation website, especially for artists, uh, check this out. Uh, sign up for their newsletter to get these opportunities in your mailbox. It is nationalparksartsfoundation.org. And as we chat with Alice, you're going to want to look at her art. Go to alicelease.com. It's Alice, L-E-E-S-E, -E -E, alicelease.com. And you're also going to want to look at what's going on at the fort because this is such a beautiful place. It is nps.gov forward slash F-O-U-N. Uh, so welcome back, Lorenzo. How are you? Well, I'm doing very well, and I'm really excited about today. Um, you know, I've been looking forward to this. We are always uh, you know, very happy with our artists and residents that, that come through Fort Union. Uh, we feel we pick the best artists in America to come out here and uh, utilize, you know, our resources, you know, essentially the fort and as the background in their paintings and, you know, uh, help spread the news about the great opportunities that are out here at Fort Union and just how beautiful it is out here. I know. It's so amazing. I know mm -hmm. last year you were on our show with uh, Patricia Cummins, who was there, and, you know, she was calling me on the phone to check her phone reception before we recorded the interview, and she was like, oh my gosh, there's pronghorn and like mm -hmm. right here, you know, and then, you know, it's interesting because I've been following Alice on Instagram and there she is in the snow. I'm like, what's going on? There's like mm -hmm. stuff going on every second there. It seems like it's a changing landscape, Lorenzo. And that's what's interesting too, because it was a, not only a changing landscape in, in nature, but it's a changing landscape in history and politics uh, at the fort. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, Fort Union, you know, one of our kind of introductions to the history of the region, of course, is always tied into Fort Union. And we say Fort Union uh, was an agent of change. And whether it was desired or not, so whether you wanted to change or not, Fort Union, you know, it made it happen. You know, it changed politics, it changed the economy. And then of course, you know, it also established that all important federal presence out here in the West. So Wow. You know, places like Fort Union are just so involved in politics and with everything that goes on in the world. You know, this place uh, had an impact on not just itself, but 46 other forts, you know, wow. because 46 other forts got their supplies from Fort Union. So, you know, their impact was just, you know, was even more beyond the 50 mile radius of this place. I mean, it went all the way into uh, Yuma, you know, Arizona, Fort Apache, all the way down to Fort Davis. And, you know, southwest Texas, so, you know, as far north as, as Colorado and, you know, the forts up there. So it had a huge reach. Wow. And, wow. you know, its influence was that great. And it's on the Santa Fe Trail, too. So that's another thing. So we can't wait because Nancy and I are getting on our, back on our Love Your Parks tour uh, in next year, May 2019. We'll be full-time on the road continuing our quest to visit every single national park unit in the country and the ones we have outside of the country in our uh, national territories like Guam and the Virgin Islands. I mean, why not? Um, so we'll be going there and connecting with all the communities like Las Vegas, I believe is your community. And uh, so we're going to be doing that. So we're going to come see you. And uh, I hope, I hope, you know, we're not too rowdy for you, Lorenzo. <laughs> I don't think we can be right. I don't think so. You had a fort of a lot of, 
men there, right? And women. So, you know, there was there was there was noise over at the fort at some time. So we can we can do that, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Me. You know you know, Fort Union, uh you know, one of the things and you're gonna notice it when you arrive here, and I know Alice has noticed it, it feels very remote. You feel like mm-hmm. if you're in the middle of nowhere, we're mm-hmm. very fortunate that uh we're surrounding landscape has it really changed in, you know, 150 years. Oh, but wow. if you would have been here when the fort was here and, and running, you would have averaged about two to 3,000 people here every day. Wow. So it would not have been in the middle of nowhere at the time. It would have been a happening place. You know, you would have seen uh, civilians coming and going and traders. Uh, you would have seen uh, soldiers. You know, there was a lot of business happening here at Fort Union. So, I didn't know the Santa Fe Trail was a component of that, but the component that the Santa Fe Trail had to deal with Fort Union was the moving of military goods, supplies to other forts. Not necessarily hmm. people going, like when we think about like the Pony Express Trail, that was the Pony Express going with mail. Then we had like the Overland Stage Route, and we also had like the California National Historic Trail where people were, you know, and, and also like the Donner Party going west from Missouri. <laughs> So this is different. That that was people going west. This is more of a military going and moving across. Well, well, you know, the Santa Fe Trail is a very unique trail. So it it um, it was not a settlement trail. Hmm. Uh, okay. The Santa Fe Trail, which you know, it starts in 1821, and it's to move goods down to Mexico. You know, when and and it was moving supplies and materials that they could get from the United States. Before the Santa Fe Trail, goods came directly from Spain. So you got to imagine if you needed something, it took almost a year for you to get it. You know, because you would place an order, you'd go across the ocean on a ship to Spain, get made, get put on a ship and come back across the ocean, and then get delivered up in, you know, wherever it had to go. Well, it took forever. So when the United States becomes part, you know, a, a larger country and begins trading with Mexico when they won their independence from Spain, it was important for, for Mexico because they're getting goods coming to, you know, Mexico, and they loved it. Wow. Uh, so, you know, this is before Fort Union was, was built. And then, of course, you know, you have uh, the Mexican-American War in 1846. And at that point, then, by 1848, this is part of the United States of America. So the Santa Fe Trail still runs and exists because Mexico, even though, you know, they lost the war, they still continue to trade on the trail. The trail ceased to exist more because of the railroad coming west, uh, because goods move faster on a train, yeah. you wow. know, and, and instead yeah. of on a wagon. So the trail served the purpose of movement of trade goods between two countries, and then eventually the military used it to move goods, you know, mm-hmm. to other forts. So it had, you know, it had multiple purposes. I, this is so fascinating to me because I know even being here in Tucson, Arizona. Um, you know, the railroad changed the landscape here. And I want to bring our, our special artist guest, Alice Lees, on here because uh, she's also from West Texas, uh, from Winkler County, home of Roy Orbison, my hero singer. He's like my <laughs> dude, man. Seriously, I love Roy Orbison. <laughs> no idea. He's a great um, one. I love your art, yeah. Nancy, and I've been just drooling over your art all day because it's so interesting looking at. Uh, we just love your art, the the paintings. We've been following you on Instagram and watching the paintings of the fort. And you just, you really, Alice, welcome, number one, but you seem so Diverse. part of that landscape there. And I feel like it's so cool that you come from West Texas to Northern New Mexico because it is connected. Do you feel that? And welcome. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, Yes, I feel a part of the landscape here because it is, I think, so remote. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, in West Texas, we see beautiful sunrises and sunsets, and that's what you get here at Fort Union. And uh, there's not much here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're we're kind of on the edge of the high plains where the plains meet the mountains, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, there's uh, the Turkey Mountains and Bald Mountain and Black Mesa kind of surrounding a, a large, flat, grassy plain. And uh, it's uh, short grass. And uh, you can imagine herds of buffalo roaming across it. And, and I've seen the 
pronghorn oh. and big mm. big herds of them. I saw Ooh. a herd probably of, of about a hundred. <gasps> no way. But uh, yeah, I, I feel at home here because um, because nobody's here. It's so quiet. Mm. Um, you know, it's hard to imagine. Like Lorenzo said, two to three thousand people in the fort and and doing things and repairing wagons and getting ready to go further west or down into chihuahua mexico or or mm. or getting just resting up you know so it's uh I, I feel at home on on the ranch where where i live in west texas uh we're 30 miles from the nearest town and uh we you know we just got uh electricity in the 40s and uh, I can remember uh, there uh, going out and to the battery house and filling up the batteries with my dad for the wind charger <laughs> because there was no electricity and and uh, he built his own phone line wow, and cool. uh, you know it's just recently that we got uh, cell phones and wow. uh, of course we have to climb climb the windmill tower to get a signal but um, <laughs> we we still are able to communicate with the outside world, but it is a long way to go get a loaf of bread. Well, oh. you, you can bake your own. Or I know this is so interesting where you are because Nancy and I've driven through. Um, mm -hmm. We we went. We were. I've done the marathon drive, like literally not marathon Texas, which is near you, but I've done the the cross country yeah. drive a few times and done it in a flat non-stop kind of deal which isn't recommended to anybody but um it is such a <laughs> to Walmart. me i love your country because that like you're saying there's those big when you say there's nothing there to me that's where it is everything it's everything's it is, there there's that open sky mm -hmm. and being able to see the mountains and how mm -hmm. things meet them and there's there's colors that change on the mountains with the sunrise sunset or right. the clouds you have that out there and you have that I think where I'm watching your your paintings on and Fort Fort Union you're playing there you're out there in the snow too and the <laughs> colors are just like I mean when you're outside I know that you're used mm -hmm. to you know rounding up cattle or weaning cattle <laughs> at this time of year yes um when you're outside and now in a different role right it yet you you're obviously you know you're an amazing artist so art is, you know, I know you do one side of your life. And also I know that you're studying as well for an MFA. So like you're, you're a busy lady, but when you're out there now for this month long immersion, when you're painting and you're sitting outside at that fort, are you, do you like envision the people there? Do you, do you envision, you know, the, the military guys, do you, do you see the soldiers? Do you see the people at the fort, you know, the, the ladies doing the laundry, that kind of thing while you're painting. Right. Yes. Um, I can imagine, uh, you know, the, like I read a book about a lady who went up and down the Santa Fe trail several times because she married a, a soldier and, uh, she, uh, her name was Marion Sloan Russell. And she, you can, from, through her eyes, I can I can see how much she loved the trail. She loved the openness. You can mm -hmm. see forever. And and coming up on Fort Union from from the High Plains, knowing that you know this is a place you can rest. They have supplies here since they supplied all these other 46 other forts. You know you could get your wagon repaired and and get ready and or wow. or rest and then go on to the other wherever you were going. And I think she went on to El Pas, uh, to, uh, Santa Fe and, uh, with her mother. And then later on, she married a soldier from Port Union, uh, against her mother's wishes, I think. But, uh, anyway, I, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just kind of happens. But you, that's amazing. But, so you're connecting with the women, the women's side of the story which is neat. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, uh there were a lot of soldiers, but you know, a lot of women followed them. And uh sometimes their stories are are pretty harrowing or, you know, they're pretty uh pretty strong women, so it it's mm -hmm. it's nice to have those stories and connect that way. 
I think they're they're mm-hmm. forgotten a lot of times. When you think about forts, I remember going to Fort Bowie and seeing where the women were there creating, setting up the laundry rooms and knowing that the Apache Wars were going on. Yeah. And like this, this was happening. You're in the middle of nowhere and you feel mm-hmm. it because you have to, you know, hike in. I think it's like a mile and a half or something. It's, it's pretty easy, but um, just going out there and knowing like the Butterfield stage reach came through here, all of this stuff happened, but here are these women in the middle of nowhere just doing things and you go like you when you think about forts and and military posts you just you rarely hear the stories of women so I'm so glad to hear this you just never hear about how yeah. they're not the, at the forefront a lot you know it's just kind of they're there they're talked about in the parks but it's you, right. your immediate mindset isn't that right and also you running you know running being co, co-runner of a ranch um, how many people think women do that either kind of like the man's oh, world sometimes true right? true yeah yes <laughs> yeah yes uh yeah uh there's three managing partners for our ranch which is a an average size west texas ranch but it, that means it's pretty large because it takes a lot of land to run mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. one cow and mm-hmm. and so we run i guess around 500 or so but um there's two other managing partners and one's my brother and one's a cousin and uh I keep threatening to quit because uh, uh <laughs> it's just a lot of work and I'd rather be painting. <laughs> yeah, I wanted I wanted to ask you about this, yeah. you know, growing up, I mean, you know, I I I again your area is beautiful and Nancy and I've lived in areas kind of similar in, in South Africa and I, at one point in our lives lived on a ranch and it was just this different lifestyle and it was so cool and simple, like simplistic in regards to, um, and that's not a, in a de- derogatory way. It's about getting down to reality, maybe. What's, what's <laughs> in other words, important. we don't need all this other right. stuff, it's, you know, crammed up in our life that really doesn't need to be there. It's about, it's very real. Um, but for you, where did the art start for you? I mean, was this something you were doing as a kid? Were you painting on the ranch as a kid or? What ha- where where did it start? Well, I I painted a little bit as a kid. I didn't know that was what I would be doing here 54 mm. years later, but uh I mm. when it was time to go to college, I I thought, well, what do, what do I want to do? And it seemed like being an artist would would be the best way to spend a lifetime. So, I I looked up the curriculum for uh, for where I went to school, and uh, it it looked pretty good. So that's what I did. Hmm. So, I, as an as an artist myself, um, I would like to ask you a little bit about your use of color, and also yeah. what I what what stands out for me in your painting is what when I went to call it art college, they they had this the, the eye of the viewer the pathway into a painting where you you the viewer goes to the focal point that you made them go to and leads them into the painting and Mm. are you conscious of that when you're painting or does is this just happening naturally i'm i'm conscious of that composition is a big uh, big part of painting uh Mm. and and drawing if you don't have a good drawing, you're not going to have a good painting. Yeah. So, um, you know, that needs to be really strong. But I admire the art of this old, old artist, Al- Albert Durer. And mm-hmm. he, he, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he was an old German painter and uh, woodcutter and engraver. And uh-huh. he would cram so much content into one image that it was um, pretty amazing that you could pick out a focal point and go to it. Hmm. So when I'm painting, I kind of try to follow along the, that, those lines and mm-hmm. try to put a lot of content into the painting. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking closely at a painting, you might see a rattlesnake, a rabbit, you'll see all mm-hmm. kinds of wildlife, coyotes, uh, mule deer, everything that I see when I'm out riding on the ranch, mm-hmm. all of that's in the painting. 
it, mm. even if it's a landscape or if it's a painting of a cow, you know, you'll see a windmill in the background and mm -hmm. uh, other cows headed towards the windmill. You'll probably see a pump jack since I live in the Permian Basin where that that's mm -hmm. all they do is pump oil. And, yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking this, at that right now. And, and <laughs> like Wilkes Sand Mine and, you know, what's interesting, you have these oh, lines yes. going through what you're talking about, you, you you bring this in, but there's movement. So it's kind of, in some ways, there's I, I, I can see how you did some illustration work as well in, in, in your career here. Um, but at the same time, these lines, there's these textures, and there is there is an illustration mode to it. And it, it makes you start to go, okay, there's something hidden in here. Let me look in this nook and cranny. It's almost right. in, in a different way, almost like, I don't know. There's this. It's whimsical, but gives you this sense of place. That's amazing. Just looking at it. All it's. Different. It's. Uh, I would describe it as uh, regionalism with a twist. Oh, I like that. Oh, I that like sounds that. Like a good drink. Oh, I it's, like that. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. So you yeah, did. You did album painting. covers too. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, it's a painting of a specific place, but it's not of that specific place it's a painting of what it feels like to be mm -hmm. in that place exactly mm -hmm. i love it i like that and being at the fort uh watching you paint the fort um does that add this whole you know i know you've painted some of the buildings too you, like the oil pumps and and mines and, and things like that too and windmills but painting that does that give you this different kind of structure in in your work of just like line form as you're painting to have the fort there. Oh yeah, the the fort, uh, the remaining structures are uh, uh, the leftover adobe and um, the the chimneys that are made out of brick that, that mm. never did fall down. And mm. so they give you a nice vertical to uh, show your horizontals of the landscape against mm. and the horizontals of the clouds. So that's um, the lines here are really nice, and, and then of course you have the mountains in the background, and uh, mm. it Man. it just makes for a, a really nice composition. This is awesome, I, I Lorenzo. It. This is such a cool program. I'm so excited. I mean, this is now four years running, right? And having artists come out and and the plain air painting. I think it's so nice that. Alice is putting it up on her social media. People get to see it. I know she's got an event coming up in nearby Las Vegas, which is the original Las Vegas, by the way. I know. So one of our travel writers, Debbie Stone, visited there. Mm -hmm. And we have a feature up on, on our site about it. And it's it's interesting to me that, you know, how this can go out everywhere into the world. So it, doesn't this kind of go back to the history of the national parks, even the National Park Service being created is through the arts? Yeah, and I think we're really fortunate that uh, we were able to, you know, get the program started here and really find fantastic artists. I, you know, all four that we've had over the years have done, you know, really, you know, exceptional work. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to put the pressure on Alice, <laughs> but, you know, we've been really fortunate. We've gotten beautiful art, uh, but, you know, part of it is, you know, the location. You know, I try to try to you know give Fort Union some credit in that sense, uh, but uh, you know it is another medium for us to invite people to enjoy Fort Union National Monument. Mm. You know, uh, a lot of people don't think about art in that manner, but you know, a lot of people look at the world differently, and I mm. think that it, when we uh, provide that opportunity for people to, you know, let's say you can never ever, ever come here, but you know, Alice's work goes all over the world. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of these artists, and so they get to enjoy or see or learn something about Fort Union, you know, through a painting mm -hmm. or through a photograph or through something, and it might be just that little, uh, you know, little impetus that they needed to learn more about Fort Union or learn more about the West and, you know, uh, get get an opportunity to come and visit us, you know, to Isn't actually it? see it uh, in, in the real, you know, in a sense that I'd like to say. I, uh, I would say so, art is the best best tourism generator ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? It gets people mm -hmm. to know about an area. They see it in a painting. They hear it in a song, 
or a movie and they go, Oh, I want to go there. And mm -hmm. that's why I was going to ask you, there's that, that in, inspire people to come out or even if they can't be there, they're at least experiencing the park in this other way. But what about your local community? Las Vegas, um, isn't how far is it from the park? I mean, I mean, residents have got to be wowed by an artist coming in and being able to see their local national park unit in a different view from the artists that come to visit. Oh yeah, and 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 I know you know most folks know this. You know, Las Vegas has a great group of of local artists, but art is it's, it has its own audience. You know, it's not your, your driving audience. It's not the kids or the youth sometimes that are coming out here for a different purpose. So when people go to an art show or go to a gallery uh, or, you know, are, are somewhere else, they're looking at art. And it's this audience that a lot of parks don't even think about or a lot of people don't even think about. And uh, we do, you know, our opportunities here at Fort Union in terms of getting folks out here they're pretty limited, you know. You know, our visitation isn't isn't the greatest. So what we try to do is, you know, we tap into the education, we tap into, you know, uh, folks that you know love art or history, and you know, with this art component, you know, they get to really visualize, you know, pictures. You know, somebody on it is true. You know, it's a thousand words out there. Uh, it's another way to bring somebody to visit us. You know, it's part of that tourism component. Um, you know. And for most people, you know, especially for us, it's free advertisement, uh, you know, in, 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 as simple as I can put it. But it's also a great way to share a great resource. Mm. And uh, we, we, we love it. Uh, we do get visitors locally that, that uh, you know, we, we actually go through the high school uh, art classes and they come out here and they learn about art and they learn about you know, uh, all, all the stuff that comes with it in terms of sketching and, you know, putting stuff in, in context and backgrounds. Uh, we have photography education here. Uh, oh, yeah. And, you know, the kids learn how to do, you know, what's really stunning, the amount of you that have no idea how a camera works because they're so used to their cell phones. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. so we we provide cameras to youth and, they learn how to uh, select a subject and do landscapes and panoramics and, you know, stuff that wow. some of it take for, you know, uh, you know granted. And, and they learn how to turn a camera on and turn it off. And you, you think that that's so simple, but for some folks, they've never, ever had to do that. Wow. You know, there, hmm. there, there are a group of kids that have never touched a camera. Wow. wow. No, but that's, you're really right. I mean, you're really right. And, and, mm -hmm. and that goes for people too. Um, and I know artists and photographers battle that too. If people think, you know, I'm a photographer because I have a phone. <laughs> it's, there's that weird thing there. And I don't want to get into that, but it's true. And I think it's really important that, you know, the youth do get to have that opportunity to try it out. And, and the ruins, um, you know, when you look at the fort, I mean, it, to me, that is like the most awesome subject. I mean, Alice, just the photos you're sending to me, I mean, be it painting or photography, <laughs> they really are like an icon to photo. I mean, there's how many angles can you go at it? You know, there's a lot of angles, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> I, I, I know we're recording this while you're there. And so this, you know, everyone listening now, it, this is a little bit of, at a later point, but um, not that later, um, but you're in a few days going to be doing an event. Um, and I know this is part of this with the Artists in Residence Program with the National Parks Arts Foundation. They have people that support them uh, mm -hmm. and everybody, nationalparksartsfoundation.org. Check it out. Tanya says, hi, it's Tanya Ortega, the founder. Uh, we always love to have her on our shows. Mm -hmm. uh, she can't be here with us mm -hmm. right now, but... Um, she, I know you're doing an event with the Las Vegas Arts Council, so I want to give them a shout out. So, tell us about what you're going to do. Well, uh, I'm going to take some paintings I've been working on here at Fort Union, and uh, they're little plein air uh, paintings. And I'll take my painting box and set it up and talk about how I go about painting, uh, how to how to choose a composition, 
Mm-hmm. What, what all goes into that painting? Uh, talk about the palette, uh, limited palette with mm. uh, warm and cool of red, yellow, and blue, and then a couple of blacks and white. And with the, just those few colors, you can make you can make the rainbow and mm-hmm. get every color that there is in into your painting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then probably talk about uh, adding things in like wildlife. Um, there's a cottontail rabbit that hangs out right here by the visitor center that uh, I've sketched a few times. And um, yeah, just uh, and then there'll be a short Q and A after that where nice. uh, they can ask questions. So yeah. So for our other artists applying for next year's residency. Tell them what it's like lodging wise and the experience. Would you would you do this again? Would you number one go into another residency this way? Oh yes, I would. The people here have been great. The Rangers are great. Lorenzo's been wonderful. I mean, yeah, Lorenzo, uh, come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the lodging is is good. I'm real tall. The bed's sort of short. <laughs> and uh so that's uh I just hang my feet off or slip <laughs> corner to corner and it's great. The heater works wonderfully. Uh it's it's very nice. So uh-huh. I couldn't be more pleased. Uh it is remote, but uh that's that's fine with cool. me. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, would you do another it. one of their other residencies would there be another park that interests you? Oh yes, I I'd, I'd like to go to Hawaii. Okay, <laughs> I'll meet you there. <laughs> I'll meet you there too. That's great. I know. I think, I mean, it's just unique. I mean, I love this program so much because I think it's, we get to, we get the privilege of interviewing all the artists going through and we're like, this is the coolest thing ever. But then, you know, when we hang up off of this, I'm like, well, I want to go now, uh, but we will be going to Fort Union for sure. That yes. is on the list. That's on our uh, list. Lorenzo, uh, before we go, I just wanted to also touch base. So most people coming in uh, to visit Fort Union is, so Las Vegas is the place where everyone should stay? Typically, uh, Las Vegas is the closest town. You know, it's 27 miles away, so it's a good half, you know, it's a half hour drive. Mm. Uh, people will actually stay, you know, up in Raton, uh, you know, which is about an hour and 10 minutes from us. Um, some folks will actually stay in Mora, you know, uh, which is west of us. So. You know, there there are multiple communities that folks will stay in and oh, okay. uh and, and, and you know, but Las Vegas is the closest in, in, in the sense of, you know, hotels being right around the corner and that kind of stuff. Okay. And uh yeah, uh, but you know, I, what I wanna do is also share that you know, there's all other communities that surround us that have hotels and motels. Okay. So, yeah, you got a lot of communities. Well, we're going to go see them all. <laughs> we're just like, we're ready. We're ready. I'm like, I know. It's so cool. And you got movie history. You got so much history. And how far are you from Pecos? Because it, that's, I know that Pecos is connected to Las Vegas, so you can't be that far. So people can do both parks, right? If they come yeah, we're about, uh, oh, gosh, an hour and 15 minutes from Pecos. Oh, that's Ooh. nothing. That's nothing. That's a drop in the bucket. <laughs> that's well, nothing. Well, you know, it's... You know, just, I tell folks, you're just a hop and a skip. That's yeah, it. but not in, when you were on the Santa Fe, it wasn't a hop and a skip. That was a step and a step and a step and a lot of steps, right? <laughs> no, it was, that it was, was three lot. days. Hey, now, okay, wait. Now, does does Fort Union connect with Fort Davis? Because that's in West Texas. Is that there? Well, Fort, yeah, well, we're a long way from Fort Davis. Uh, okay. You know, yes. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're a fur piece away. Oh, okay. okay. So that so that didn't happen. So you were more on the Arizona side when you were doing things like back in the day when it came yeah, to well, you, supply. Yeah, Fort yeah, Fort Union was more. Uh, you know, the, we were part of the Eleventh Military District, and this was where the command was held. And so, you know, I, I kind of mentioned forty six forts got their supplies and materials from Fort Union. You know, uh, some some trips. You know, let's say they were going to Fort Apache. You know that that's a that's a three week you know uh, train ride in a sense uh, excuse me a wagon train ride yeah uh, and uh, so you know it was, that that was a, that was pretty far but you know you had Fort Bascom Fort Bowie Fort uh, you know Fort Apache getting supplies you had a fort you know here Fort Union you had a you know forts in Santa Fe getting supplies uh, you know up and down the Rio Grande Valley. 
Uh, and then the other thing that Fort Union did, which is kind of the, the, the difficult part about the fort, it was also the regional uh, supply for Indian reservations. Uh, you know, for Native American internment camps. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, this oh. is where Indian agents, you know, ordered their supplies for for the reservations. You know, th- and I'm talking about, you know, in the mid-1860s, yeah. 1870s, wow. 1880s. Mm-hmm. So this is the you know, shifting of history. It's incredible here. It's yeah. incredible. Wow. But, you know, you got to imagine a place like this. And this is, you know, I, I tell people that, you know, there's a good side and a bad side to Fort Union, you know, but it did what it was told to do. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, I, I I tell folks, imagine, you know, uh, being a Navajo uh, folk, you know, Indians, you know, down mm-hmm. at, uh, at, at a place and, and, you know, it took a week for your supplies to get to you. So if they bake bread here at the fort, imagine it's sitting in a wagon for a week. Mm-hmm. And that's what you got. You know, they, the military said, well, we're feeding you. So mm-hmm. there's, you know, there's a little bit of tragedy in the, fort, the fort's history. And that's one of the things we try to convey to people is, there's there's a lot of good and there's some bad, but mm-hmm. you know whatever the policy that the government had coming out of Washington, you know for you did it. But that's important. That's what's important about our National Park Service. You carry the history of our country. Three quarters, I think, is it two thirds or three quarters of our National Park Service is actually historic sites and histor- historical uh, monuments in in national historic national parks or battlefields, historic trails, and the history you're going to get is exactly what happened there. You go in and you're going to see all sides and it's up to you about how you handle it. It's about getting the actual facts, right? That's to me the important. And even when you go to places like Sequoia National Park, you're still going to get history. You're going to get Buffalo soldier history, Native American history, settlers, pioneers. Uh, So you can go to the big natural ones like Yellowstone, Yosemite, uh, you know, Smoky Mountains. You're still going to get history. Every single park has history and nature connected in some way. They're all Yeah, connected. and you know and, and but the big deal about it is what perspective are you receiving? And mm-hmm. that's what parks do a good job of is mm-hmm. giving you all Absolutely. of the different perspectives. You know, you can get a Native American perspective, you can get a you know mm-hmm. Hispanic perspective. You know, you can get a military soldier's perspective. And you, you know, when you guys started off your conversation about talking about women you can get a woman or a child's mm-hmm. perspective from Fort Union. And that's the whole idea is trying to get all these audiences, when they come through a place like Fort Union, they can learn about it. And if you want to learn more, because yeah, so we're just giving you the tip of the iceberg. If you want to learn more, then you can purchase a book or you know, peruse the bookstore and find something that is going to give you kind of that satisfaction of you know, wanting to gnaw more on that bone and learn more. Mm. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. And everybody go to the bookstores. They help the parks, by the way. And get oh, your yeah. park pass for the year or get the senior park pass. Oh, I love my The senior park, park, pass. park pass rocks. It rocks. Yes, get I that. It. Support the Not park. Not that I'm saying I'm a senior. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You're the wise one. Um, <laughs> before you both go, I want to know if, if you could take a walk in Fort Union, where are you going to walk? Like, which direction? Like, is, is there a specific pathway? And who would you take a walk with, alive or passed on? So if there's somebody from the past at the fort. I want to know. And what what's the topic of discussion when you take a walk? Or are you going to be silent? So it could be anybody. I mean, it could be Georgia O'Keeffe who goes, I think flowers need to be there. Hollyhocks at the fort. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but let's start with you, Alice. If you could take a walk with someone at the fort, who would it be and where? Well, I think I would take a walk with uh, Marion Sloan Russell, and mm. she's the lady that went up and down the yeah. trail several times, and, and we'd head out north towards where the wagon tra- tracks come in from the north, and uh, I think I'd just be quiet and listen to her speak. Mm. She was so eloquent, mm. and listen to her reminisce and and try to get her to talk about what uh, was going on at the time she was here mm-hmm. and imagine the structures, the buildings, the officer's quarters, the hospital, everything that was here when she was coming through here. Wow. 
cool. Wow. And you just think, I mean, I've talked about it, like, take a one hour walk. I mean, we've got our Facebook group, everyone, hashtag one hour walk uh, to get people cool, to take though. a walk. Like but it's it. like, she really walks. She's like the grandma Gatewood of, you know, the Appalachian mm-hmm. fame, Appalachian trail fame of like the Santa <laughs> Fe trail. Like, that's amazing. I had never heard of her. So now I'm going to go look her up. Thank you for that, Alice, oh. uh, along with getting to view your work, which is awesome, amazing, mm. just, ah, I love it. I love it so Thank much. Thank you. Um, so, Lorenzo, who are you taking a walk with? Oh, my goodness. There's so many people that came to Fort Union, but there is a particular individual. His name was Ciprano Vigil. He was a, a contractor that was you know, an ancestor of mine. I was going to say, Fijil. And now, can I say your name correctly now? Fijil, now that oh, you said that. No, that's so exciting. <laughs> this is awesome. Yes. Wow. You know, and I would have just picked his brain about, you know, uh, you know, because these guys were selling flour and they were selling grains, you know, uh, and, and, you know, why to Fort Union? You know, what was going on in, in, in my community where I grew up, mm. you know, uh, you know, we, and this was during the Civil War, you know, all the way beyond the Civil War, just to see uh, why they choices that they made and, and so forth, mm-hmm. uh, just to get that, you know, the feeling of the past in that sense. Wow. And, and don't you just want to, like, be a fly on the wall yeah. and know what really Did, went down? You I know. know. What, I always think, okay, <laughs> this is what I read, this is what I heard. But I wanted to be there. I want to so see, see for myself. Yeah, where would you walk with them? <laughs> well, you know, throughout the fort, you know, another individual was a guy named Serran St. Brain. Mm. And he constructed all the mills that surround Fort Union. And uh, a lot of the local farmers and ranchers were growing wheat and selling it to the mills and selling it to him. And he was, you know, this guy was a millionaire, you know, selling mm. stuff to Fort Union. Wow. And mm. uh, you know uh, these are these 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 guys knew the local people, and you know just get an idea of what the world was like. So you know uh, you know I, I would have, I would walk through the fort, and I think more so through the depot, mm-hmm. you know where the supplies and goods were coming through, and and I would have you know just just to get an idea of what was being stored inside of them, and mm. uh, how much and you know how much money did you really make, kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, because there's always someone making money. There, it's, oh, everybody. Yeah. There's like there's a, always an opportunist mm-hmm. that goes in, and and is making money. Mm-hmm. There's in every fort. There's a money maker. You know, there is. They just go. Oh, yeah. oh I know how to do this, and it's like I want to know what you did. Like, where's your brain going with this? Teach me how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But no, really, uh, both of you, thank you so much uh, again, everyone. The National Parks Arts Foundation. Uh, they really partner with amazing people. Uh, you know, the National Park Service, uh, Fort Union, uh, the Las Vegas Arts Council, and uh, people that donate towards these programs where artists get to stay in the national parks uh, for a full month. And uh, it's just so such cool. an amazing program. Alice, would you agree? It's an amazing program. I mean, to me, like, I want to be you. <laughs> I want to go stay there oh, yeah. for a month and paint. I just need to it, learn how to paint, you know. <laughs> it's incredible to get to spend th- 30 days uh, mm. just painting it's wonderful yeah. that, awesome? that that to me is like to be able to do anything you really love just for that 30 days of just this right. is what you're doing like that that's it you know <laughs> um so i love so this cool. i love that you're there i, I just love your work everyone mm-hmm. alice lease.com it's l-e-e-s-e alice lease.com please keep up with her on instagram as well a national parks arts foundation.org and fort union nps.gov forward slash f-o-u-n uh we can't wait to come see you lorenzo serious we're gonna we're gonna make some noise we're gonna be the three thousand people <laughs> well, I'll be waiting. No. no we'll be we'll be quiet because you know what we want to see the pronghorn we want to enjoy the peace of it in, of the area mm-hmm. and uh, we can't wait to meet you in person uh everybody we've got a special song this is dedicated to alice because she's a rancher in West Texas. So we got to get our friend. Oh, no, so you are in the southwest corner of New Mexico, really, your area, right? Your county is like touching New well, Mexico. Well, uh, right Fine. where the southwest corner of New Mexico makes that right angle. We're, mm. we're just over in Texas. And cool. it's Winkler. Out, and, out and there I know in people the sand hills, say, yeah. Don't wink and all that stuff. But you can 
Roy Orbison has <laughs> like his childhood home there. Like that's a museum, right? We can go there. Yeah, I mean, in and in Wink, Texas. After it. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't bring him in. Don't don't mess with Roy Orbison. Seriously, <laughs> Roy Orbison is the man. Seriously, so he's he does. He has a museum there. We can go. We're gonna go, Nancy. Oh yeah, We're going. We have to. We have to go. I want to see that. That's like amazing. Um, so this song is called Horses and Cattle. It's from mm. our friend Mike Mateau. Uh He is known as New Mexico's enchanting cowboy. And so because, you know, you're tech, West Texas and you're in, in New Mexico, we have to, now we have to play this. And you ranch. Uh, he is awesome. Mike Mutu, everybody. It's Mike, M-O-U-T-O-U-X. Um, you could say Mike Mutu is actually correct, but everyone knows him as Mike Mutu. And uh, you can go to his website, Mike Mutu, as I was saying. And this is off of his album, Spirit Still Remain. See? Mm. That's I another like connection back to Fort Union. Uh, spirits still remain. Cowboy music and poetry, so check it out. But here it is, horses and cattle. Keep up with us at BigBlendRadio.com. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining us, Alice and Lorenzo. Spring on the ranch and the cattle are restless. It's been dry, the grass still ain't grown. They've knocked down a fence and now 20 are missing. We need to find them, bring them all home. But the cattle are scattered all over the place, down the draws up the slopes in the trees. There's only one way to get them, I'm thankful for that, with horses and cowboys like me. Summer on the ranch, new calves will need branding. We'll gather them up at first light. It's a pretty big pasture, we've got extra men. We're all gonna sleep good tonight. Cause the cattle are scattered all over the place. Down the draws, up the slopes, in the trees. There's only one way to get them, I'm thankful for that. With horses and cowboys like me. Horses and cattle, the cowboy's life It takes both to set a man free The cows make you money, horses bring pleasure Together, they're all that we need Fall on the ranch, we're shipping the yearlings Busiest time of the year We've loaded the trucks, the boss got a good price The smile on his face says it clear Cause the cattle were scattered all over the place Down the draws, up the slopes, in the trees There's only one way to get them, I'm thankful for that With horses and cowboys like me Winter on the ranch, we're feeding the cattle Using a pickup most days Now and then there's other work to be done I love to hear the boss say Well the cattle are scattered all over the place Down the draws up the slopes in the trees Saddle your horse and meet me back here Today you're riding with me when the cattle are scattered all over the place Down the draws, up the slopes, in the trees There's only one way to get them I'm thankful for that With horses and cowboys like me